What is up everybody and welcome to FLW videos. In today's episode, I've got a very exciting topic to talk about and it is comparing Shadow Pokemon versus their normal forms in Pokemon Go, specifically focusing on the raid side and of course discussing everything centered around the features of a Shadow Pokemon to figure out whether or not we should end up powering up these Shadow Pokemon. Something additional that we're going to be doing that I think is really cool is we're going to be comparing a 000 IV Shadow Metagross versus is a 100% IV non-shadow Metagross to see how they end up lining up. But anyways, if you do enjoy this episode, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So up on the screen, I've got the cost structure centered around the shadow and purify Pokemon. Now purified on paper seems to be like it would be a good way to save on candy, save on Stardust, especially on something like a legendary Pokemon, right? Like that seems like, oh man, if it's gonna cost me that much less to end up unlocking secondary charge move, that's gonna be a huge bonus. The problem is though, is that you're gonna have to also pay to be able to purify the Pokemon from a shadow in the first place. So there's all of that going on and it's also going to be at a lower level, which means you're going to have to invest some more candy into it. So unfortunately, a lot of people end up scratching their heads saying, why the heck do I purify? But then on the flip side, what exactly do I do with these shadow Pokemon? They end up becoming more expensive when you're talking about powering them up where they are 20% more expensive and then unlocking a secondary charge move. That's also going to be a 20% increase in Stardust as well as the candy. But at least with non-legendary Pokemon, you would think that those are a little bit easier to obtain the candy. So maybe candy gets completely wiped out with that. It, it's harder of an argument for legendary Pokemon, in my opinion, based on what we're going to be talking about when we go over to the simulations. But in my mind, I'm thinking about the non-legendary shadow Pokemon that I already have a ton of candy for. Would it make sense for me to go ahead and power those up? and unlock a secondary charge move. So speaking of that, it's extremely difficult to get community day exclusive move on shadow Pokemon. We did have an event where you could TM away frustration and then you could end up obtaining a community day exclusive Pokemon move that way, uh, but which is of course very difficult or people have opted to just unlock a secondary charge move, TM it over. For example, go ahead and check this out on the screen. They ended up unlocking secondary charge move and then eventually use an elite TM to be able to obtain that. But what we're trying to say is it is right now expensive to obtain the shadow Pokemon, which might be the reason why you haven't considered investing in them. But like I said before, I've already assumed that, but I haven't done the actual research to see is the cost going to outweigh the benefits or are the benefits going to outweigh the cost, which is what we will be doing today. I'm roughly thinking, hey, if these shadow Pokemon can get a 25 to 30% increase, then maybe, just maybe, we should go ahead and power these up. We're gonna go up against a Kyurem and see how these Pokemon end up performing. I have it to where the Shadow Pokemon are gonna be included on this list as, as well as those legendary Pokemon. So if we go ahead and scroll down, we're gonna see that Shadow Metagross ends up taking over the number one spot versus Kyurem. And something interesting about this is Shadow Metagross and Metagross, of course, end up showing up in the top three. But when we take a look at these two Pokemon individually, what you're going to see is fairly interesting, I would say. So as far as the time to win is concerned, we go from a 443 to a 538. That is nearly 100 seconds of a difference in performance, which is just insane. And then beyond that, now I, I would of course consider a lot of people looking at it like, okay, well sure, it may be able to do more damage, but because it can also take more damage due to the defense, what ends up happening then? I mean, I wouldn't want to have that top Pokemon if it's going to faint way more. That actually does not end up happening because this Shadow Metagross is able to defeat the boss quicker. It ends up avoiding that to where it ends up fainting less. So we end up seeing that there is 13 faints versus 14 faints. And in other words, it's roughly similar to it with the additional 100 second improvement, which is just insane to look at it that way. And then of course, if we go ahead and take a look at the other top nine, we're gonna see that there ends up being five in this particular case, but it just never fails. There are so many shadow Pokemon that end up showing up on all of these different simulations because yes, although they get that 20% increase in their attack, they get a 20% decrease in their defense. It appears as though that attack stat ends up being worth more than that lowering of the defense. Uh, but anyways, if we go ahead and scroll down, we're gonna have to go pretty far to find the counters to the, some of those shadow Pokemon, such as a Gardevoir, such as a Dragonite, such as that Tyranitar. And we're talking about roughly like, you know, 630, 640 on the performance. 
and then when we go ahead and scroll back up we're seeing that we're around 560 so what 80 seconds 90 seconds of a difference and so it's fairly consistent across all of these shadow pokemon there's clearly a performance increase as far as that is concerned and roughly speaking the feints also remained very close to each other maybe they were a couple more with these shadow pokemon but generally speaking they were what i would consider to be very close in performance so so far it seems as though the shadow pokemon are putting up a good reason for you to invest in especially towards the top now for me i think metagross would probably be the one that i would be like okay this is a no-brainer the other ones i'm like ah, i don't know about that because i've got some other just non-shadow pokemon that can beat them but hey if there's a shadow pokemon up at that number one position and there is a clear performance increase that's something that i'm definitely interested in so now let's go ahead and dive into this raid once again versus akiram and instead we're going to be doing some crazy combinations i have to tell you this is mind-blowing so if we go ahead and take a look at this of course i could have put in the shadow metagross with the 15 15 15 ivs but hey that's not realistic right so if we go ahead and take a look at this, what I ended up doing was did a level 40 with 000 IVs and even did a level 35 with 000 IVs, of course, both of them being shadows. And both of those at level 35 was able to beat a level 40, 100% IV non shadow Metagross. That is just insane. Who knows? We could have probably gone down to level 32, maybe. And then that shadow would still be able to beat Metagross with zero IVs. Let that sink in, of course, the biggest factor needing to have that move Meteor Mash to make that happen. But if we go ahead and scroll down a little bit more, you can see where I kind of changed things up a little bit. I decided to go ahead and add in Flash Cannon instead of Meteor Mash just to see if these Pokemon could end up overcoming the regular Metagross. Unfortunately, that did not happen. If that happened, I honestly think that would be just an additional reason to potentially go ahead and get yourself that Shadow Metagross, but there ended up being a dip in the performance of roughly 40 to 50 seconds. So honestly, in that case, Flash Cannon would, would not be something to consider in that case. You would definitely want to get yourself that Meteor Mash. But this leads me to believe that this Meteor Mash Shadow Metagross, regardless of the IVs, could end up being a very solid option. I myself have a Beldum that I honestly think is decent in IVs and something that I am seriously considering getting ready. We just gotta wait for some type of event. I'm gonna TM away frustration and then of course evolve it either during the December community day or going ahead and using an elite charge TM just for fun to go ahead and get that Shadow Metagross ready. But I hope that this gives you some clarity to the situation as to what exactly you would end up doing with these Shadow Pokemon. Anyways, let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Are the expenses just too high for you to go ahead and stomach being able to power them up, unlocking secondary charge move, or has this video changed your mind? Has it brought new light to the situation? I think Metagross by all means is going to be that one Pokemon at least that I honestly think is going to be worth powering up despite it being a shadow Pokemon. But anyways, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below and I will see you next time. Huge shout out to the supporters over at Patreon. If you would like to get exclusive perks, make sure to check out that link in the description and I will see you next time.